Kyles of the world unite. Today we are talking about dirt bikes. We also have a Kawasaki right in here too, so I think that's extra, extra Kyle energy. What is going on everybody? Welcome to another episode of Yammy Noob, Weekends with Yam as it were. Today we are gonna be talking about the 11 ways that dirt bikes are super different from street bikes. Now, about five months ago, I picked up this KTM 250SXF from my buddy Brandon. So this is actually one of my personal motorcycles. This thing spends time at the trail, at the motocross track, and I have been having a ton of fun with it. But when I got it, I started learning more and more just how different dirt bikes were than street bikes. And today, I wanted to share that knowledge with you guys. Let's get started. All right guys, the first thing we're talking about today is weight. Now, weight on a motorcycle is a really important thing and this Kawasaki Z650 is generally considered to be a pretty lightweight street motorcycle. It weighs about 410 pounds. You can get it up on here, move it around pretty easily, shuffle it around your garage, pick it up if you drop it if you need to. However, this KTM 250 weighs, I kid you not, 230 pounds wet and ready to ride. It is so light in fact that I can take off this little kickstand and I can literally just move this bike around. You can literally just toss it around like it's a bicycle. The weight difference is ridiculous between a dirt bike and a street bike. So that's the first thing you gotta know. The next thing we're talking about today in ways that dirt bikes are different from street bikes is the most important aspect of any motorcycle and it's the tires. Now, you can probably already notice that the dirt bike has these really big knobs on it compared to the slicker tires over there on the Z650. And that's because a dirt bike lives in the dirt. It needs to catch traction in conditions that aren't really smooth. It needs to be able to literally grab and grip through rocks and dirt and water and all kinds of interesting things that a dirt bike might encounter. A street bike's just not gonna do that. Another thing is the dirt bike has a tubed tire. That's to allow you to run a lower PSI in your tire so you can get even more traction and not run the risk of flats like you would running a super low tire pressure on a tubeless tire. Also, tires on a dirt bike are very narrow compared to street bike tires. This is done to allow you to cut through ruts and to allow for ease of maneuverability on the bike. Following up on tires, another way that dirt bikes are really different than street bikes is the wheels themselves. So this wheel up here is a 21 inch versus a 17 inch here on the Z650. Now that's done because a bigger front wheel is gonna allow you to roll over things a lot easier and allows for better maneuverability off road. Now you wouldn't want a 30 inch chopper wheel or anything like that on an off road vehicle, but this is gonna allow you a greater level of control versus this 17 inch wheel over here. The other thing you'll notice too is that these wheels are spoked. That's to allow you to run that tube to tire like I was talking about, but also to allow the wheel to flex a little bit. When you're riding off road, typically through rocks and dirt and doing big jumps and all that kind of stuff, you want a wheel that can take those impacts and flex around them rather than something stiff like this cast wheel over here that would probably snap if you took it off a big enough jump. But Kyle's of the world, take this off a jump and let me know how it goes. Now, another way dirt bikes are really different from street bikes is their front end suspension. This motorcycle features a 48 millimeter fully adjustable fork at the front. For comparison, Z650 has a 41 millimeter. So this is way wider and way beefier to allow you to do big jumps and to tackle rocks and all that kinds of stuff. But the other big difference is that this motorcycle features 12.2 inches of suspension travel versus four and a half inches over at the Z650. So that's way more suspension travel to allow you to do all that fun off-road stuff. And we all know that 12 inches is better than four and a half when the going gets rough. The other way that dirt bikes are really different than street bikes is just how much ground clearance they have. Now ground clearance is the distance that the bottom of the frame here has to the ground. This is about 14 and a half inches on this dirt bike. Now, if you guys saw my Scrambler video a while back, I mentioned how the Street Scrambler has a pretty paltry five and a half inches of ground clearance, which limits its off-road abilities. When you have this much ground clearance, you can literally yeet this thing off of a solid ledge and you'll probably be just fine. Versus on the Z650, which is a street bias motorcycle, you don't even really care about ground clearance on that machine. 
Another way that dirt bikes are really different from street bikes is that they are not sold on the road and they don't have to comply with any of the DOT regulations here in the United States. So this motorcycle sold without mirrors, without lights, without ABS, without a speedometer, without anything that you would really think about in a normal motorcycle. Um, this bike literally has no concessions for the street or to be a road legal motorcycle because it doesn't have to be a road legal motorcycle. Now, when you look at something like the WR250R, which is Yamaha's dual sport, it may look like a dirt bike, but upon closer inspection, you'll notice it has everything to comply with the DOT regulations for it to be a street motorcycle. This KTM doesn't have any of that stuff. Another way that dirt bikes are super different from street bikes is just how compact their engines are. This 250 might as well be vacuum sealed. There's literally nothing extra on it that doesn't absolutely need to be there. Now that's not done at the detriment of power either. This 250 puts out about 40 horsepower at 14,000 RPM. I don't think your Ninja 250 could say the same. Now in comparison, when we look at the Z650's engines, we can see that there's a lot more going on here. There's ABS modules, sensors, extra bits and bobs to make this motorcycle reliable and much more streetable than something like the Race Ready 250 we just saw on the dirt bike. And that's gonna make another big difference we're gonna talk about. Piggybacking off of reliability and rideability, another way that a dirt bike is really different is that they have hour counters. Now, an hour counter is measuring the number of hours that the engine is run continuously on a motorcycle. As I mentioned, this bike doesn't have to comply with the DOT or any kind of regulations, so there's no speedometer here, no RPM counter, nothing like that. All that's really important in a dirt bike is how many hours the engine is ran because typically you start these things up and you ring them out to redline until you turn them off again. So in order for you to service them correctly, you have to know how many hours this bike has ran. As you can see, my dirt bike has ran 27.3 hours, meaning that at 30 hours, I gotta do a valve clearance check on it, which is pretty crazy when you consider that a street motorcycle that's typically done only after 10,000 miles or so. Now, another way that dirt bikes are really different from street bikes is just how tall they are. You can't get 14 inches of ground clearance and 12 inches of suspension travel without this machine being a little bit more jacked up than normal. Now, here on Yami New, we do ergonomics checks quite a bit on our motorcycles, and some of you more vertically challenged riders might see us saddle aboard an R1 or a V2 and be like, man, that's a 32, 33 inch seat height. That is so tall. Well, get this, this motorcycle has a 38 inch seat height. I'm not kidding, I'm about 5'11", about six feet tall with my boots on, got a 32 inch inseam. And when I straddle aboard this thing, I can barely get both of my feet to touch the ground. Now, that's usually not a big problem on a dirt bike and don't let it discourage you from riding one because what you can do is actually, because they're so lightweight, just pitch it over to one side and get a foot down. It feels very comfortable to do that. You can do it on either side of them. They're really more like road bikes and bicycles in that way. So don't let the very tall seat height discourage you from riding one of these things. Just as a comparison, this is me swinging a leg over the Z650 and you can tell it is much smaller and much squatter than the dirt bike. I have both my feet very comfortably to bend here and uh, it's just a really a lot easier to ride something like this. Now, those of you who watch the Yamanube channel for a long time know that seat height only tells a very small part of the story when it comes to the overall ergonomics and comfort package on a motorcycle. When you swing a leg over a dirt bike, yes, the seat height is very tall, but the next thing you notice is how it kind of suction cups you towards the front. That's because when you ride a dirt bike, you want most of your weight going towards the front wheel to provide you some more grip. So you're gonna have your arms up like this, your balls pretty much right up against the tank. If you don't have balls, just your crotch right up against the tank tank right there and you kind of ride like this. The other different thing about dirt bikes too is that they often have you standing. So you're gonna be standing on this motorcycle a lot too. So that's a very important consideration when you're looking at a dirt bike is how tall the bars are and how far you can stand. And overall, the comfort of this motorcycle is a lot more dynamic than something like a street bike where you're probably just gonna spend most of your time just sitting on it. 
Now the last point in today's video of how dirt bikes are so different from street bikes comes down to their sprockets and their gearing. If you look at the rear sprocket on a dirt bike compared to a street bike, you'll notice it is absolutely huge. That's to allow you for max acceleration when you're pulling yourself out of a rut and trying to attack your next gnarly jump or whatever. Now, the gearing on a dirt bike is also very different from a street bike as well. This KTM features a five speed gearbox and has really tight close ratios. That means as you go up through the revs, you're not gonna notice a big drop off in revs when you click through from one gear to the next. That's allow you to keep in the power band and keep on the throttle because this machine is ready to race. You'll also notice that these bikes can take off really easily in second and third gear and it's not really a big deal. That's another huge way that dirt bikes are really different from street bikes. All right guys, I hope you've learned some interesting facts today about dirt bikes versus street bikes. And if you've never swung a leg over a dirt bike, leave me a comment down below and let me know if you were excited to try one. If you are a dirt bike rider yourself, feel free to comment down below and let me know as well. I love hearing from the off-road riding community on Yami Noob. I know it's a bit smaller than our sport bike crowd, but I do love hearing from it. If you guys want more videos featuring off-road machines, let me know in the comments down below. I've never posted any videos about this thing on the channel because I feel like no one really cares about it, but I think it's a ton of fun and it's really cool to ride. If you want to have conversations with me about dirt bikes, street bikes, whatever you want, feel free to join the link down below on yamanube.co to our Discord server. It's a great way to chat with me and the rest of our community on there and it's just a ton of fun. You're going to really like what we're doing on there. We've got a new member meetup feature that's really awesome where you can meet new people in your area to ride with as well. Thanks so much for watching. Tune in next time. See you later. Hey there, partner. You done made it to the end of this here Yammy Noob video, but I tell you what, there's another Yammy Noob video right over here waiting for you. Now, I know I'm real gracious like that, and I just do nice things for you, so why don't you take a look at this video, and you let me know what you think.